Hey, welcome to. Do you know that dodgy bit right at the start of every what? YouTube live thing? Went, oh, oh, blind. Oh, 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 blind. Yeah, we just did that. Absolutely did that. Welcome to AP Workshops. Welcome to our YouTube live events. Ta da! Mate, we are totally and utterly making this up as we go along. So, we'll give you a little bit of an idea about what's happening. So, we're going to spend a little bit of time going through this bike. Change his spark plugs because Snox himself answers the phone. I answer the phone. Amber answers the phone. And we talk to people about, uh, oh, about oh, what it takes. Can I just uh, stop a little bit? My name's Snox. This man's Chris. And Amber's behind the camera. <laughs> so we're all here just in case you didn't know who we were or where we were. So apparently we are going to show you how to change the spark plugs on a V4. Uh, because there's a, a lot of uh, strange things buzzing around on the internet about how this about how it's done and, and what it takes to do it. And it, it's kind of a thing that a lot of people want to do. So uh, it's 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 a good thing to do. So we're going to show you how to go about doing that. It might be a little bit awkward. We were supposed to have two cameras, but one broke this morning. So do you know what? Nothing we can do about it. But we will be stripping this bike, changing a set of spark plugs in it to show you what's going on. So if you have a look on your screen, you should be able to pass uh, or perhaps basically post us up a little bit of like this side of the TV. Can you point at this side here? So this side oh, of the TV that, here, that's where, what they're looking at. That's the way. That, there's questions. You can put your questions up there. We are there. We are here to answer your questions. Fire uh, them in. So, to show you what's going on. So we're going to... We've got, just had far too much coffee today, I'm afraid. This you really, the Jaffa cakes. <laughs> that is not a bad thing. No. Just, no we've just got no, to calm no, down a little bit. No, no How more How much are your body warmers? Uh, say again. How much are the body warmers? I don't know. don't know. No, how much the body warmers? Is that a question? Yeah. So we've got a. Oh, okay. Um, so, no idea. I'm not just talking. No idea. We was uh, kindly given these by RST to. Uh... Special thanks to RST Clothing, Ally Helmets, Motor Oils. Thank you very much, guys, for everything that you've done for us over these last few weeks. We've had uh, we've had some help from those guys, uh, and they've been very gracious in, in helping us out with their bits and pieces. So big thanks to Ally Helmets. RST clothing and motor oils. They've been done really good. Keep those questions coming. I'm going to start um, sort of by explaining what I've got going. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Should we do? Um, just shout them out when you hear them and I'll just, as we're rattling along. Just scream at you. Just go. Shout them out. Shout <laughs> Say out. evening to Nat as well. To who? Nat. Nat and, and, and um, Matt. Nat and Matt? Yeah. Is this, uh, like... Is this like a little uh, Nat Matt? Have we got a back coming up as well? That would be great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're, we're also going to, uh, sorry, while we're on the V4, we're also going to be discussing the spark plug gaskets on these bikes. Griff will go through what's going on with those. Uh, just something we see really common in the workshop. So he's going to mention that one as well. Taking the seat off the two four millimetre Allen key screws in there, taking the seat off. How many times has anybody who's pulled these bikes apart, like pulled, their, pulled the bolt out and it's dropped down into the battery tray? What an absolute nightmare that is. Here's Bottoms. one for you. Mate, as a Gen 1 RSV99, he's selling it for handy money, but there's a noisy cam chain. Is it worth buying? Yeah, absolutely. Cam chain tension is a doddle to change, an absolute doddle. The one on the left-hand side, which does the front cylinder, is, um, can be a little bit of a pain in the hoop because there's a, um, basically, there, there's, a, there's a water accumulator in the way. But it's absolutely possible, not a difficult job to do, dead straightforward. So if it's just got a noisy cam chain tension, then yeah, happy days. Get stuck in there on that one. That could well be a bargain. 1,500 euro. <laughs> oh, yeah. Have it. Have it. Everybody knows that the price of these bikes are going up. And if you can get into the uh, get onto the, the, the ladder right now, that's absolutely awesome. Next. Next. Any more questions? What we got? If not, I'll just keep pulling this bike apart. Oh, I feel a bit awkward because I haven't got the phone next to me. So <laughs> <laughs> if I look lost, that's what's going on. I might just put one in my pocket just as a You're little You're the assistant. Or... You've got to be handing the tools, haven't you? No, no, because I don't know. I don't know where anything is, do I? How can I do that? I don't want to get sold off live. It says excellent. Thank you about the cam chains. Yeah, wicked. Honestly, that is well worth a go, definitely. Find out which, can you tell us which side it is? Is it, is it as you're sitting on the bike? Is it on the left side or the right side? Like I said, the one on the right side, uh, yeah, one on the right side's a double. Chris, let me assist. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in, I'm in, everyone. Woo! My glamorous assistant. 
So, yeah, we'll just keep pulling it apart then as we're going along. So, this here, I don't know if, uh, if there's anybody out there that doesn't quite know what's going on with these. Perhaps I take it for granted that, that, I'm, that, that I'm kind of pull these bikes apart every day, but I'm still getting quite impressed by the fact that this little gyroscope here is the bit that actually tells the engine management system at what angle you are, so curtails the intervention on the APRC. Should we just show that to the camera? Yeah, that little sensor. So people know what we're that on little about. sensor that just comes out there, it sits right around as close to the centre of gravity as possible. And basically, if you're leaning through a corner, it leans over and it softens off the APRC intervention. In other words, like the the, the kind of traction control, that kind of thing, softens it off because you don't want to. If it breaks away, you don't want the bike to shut down completely, do you? Because that's when you go no. boom. Exactly. Like I, exactly what I did at Mallory Park once. That was uh, that was painful. Hell yeah, that was painful. Oh yeah, I know this is a spark plug video, but when you check valve clearances, do you have to replace all the gaskets as well? So look, no, you don't have to, but if you find that they're leaking or if they're giving you any kind of problem or if they're giving you any kind of indication, I'm going to show you a little area on the side of the cylinder where you can tell if the spark plug gaskets are leaking. If you're changing the spark plugs, you can have a quick look down the tunnel so you can see. Snock saw earlier on was talking about spark plug gaskets. Now, basically, spark plug gaskets are something that we can see when I'm doing this. Then you can check to see the condition of those. If they need changing, they're not expensive. Change them. I think they're about what, four quid? Pennies, pennies. Yeah, there you go. Nothing, pretty much nothing. So you can change them easily enough anyway. Rocker core gaskets, just when you're seating them, the difficulty is when you're reseating the rocker cover gaskets, he's holding them in place. But there's, there's a fix. There's a fix. But yeah, have a quick look. If you think they need doing, if they're showing any evidence of leaking, then like I said, they're a few, they're a few quick change them. It's not worth worrying about. You're going to do another open day slash meet? Not this year. <laughs> so look, I'm really grateful of the opportunity. Do you even know who's actually said that? Richie. Richie. Richie Phillips. No. Oh, Richie. Rich. How you doing, mate? <laughs> yeah, I remember. How you doing? Um, no, not this year. The reason being is, do you mind if we just hold on to this a little bit? Oh, I'm not going anywhere, am I? So I'm here. I'm here for the day. So... Okay, here we go. That can. Oh, I've got that. Yeah. Sweet. All good. Thanks, bro. Nice, nice, nice. So uh, basically, situation is that it's no, <laughs> we're not going to do any more open days this year. And in fact, I don't think we're going to be doing any more open days at this building. The reason being is because it's got to the point where there's so many people turning up, we're pissing off the neighbours. And uh, I, I don't really want to piss off the neighbours, so uh, it's getting to the point where we're kind of outgrown things. So, yes, there will be meets and gatherings in the future, no questions about that, but not here and in the traditional sense like we used to, just because too many people turn up, it pisses off the residents, and I don't want to do that. So we've got to find alternative arrangements, which I think we have, but it's just a case of keep, <laughs> keep, keep bothering us and we'll, we'll keep on at it, definitely, but... We'll perhaps jump on the back of another event or make our own event about it or something. I don't know, but not in the traditional sense that it was anyway. But nice to see you, Richie. I hope you're well. Keep going with the questions there, Anne. If there any more. To. I'll let you know. I'm okay. just taking an opportunity to dance while it's live, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> yeah, explain what you're doing. So I'm unblocking them. Basically, there's some little uh, M6 by one bolts which actually hold on the coils. The coil sticks on these rather than the traditional sensor coils like you find on the V-twin engines, which makes it quite interesting. Oh, there you go. So basically, I don't know if you can see what's going on. I think you've seen this, but this part here is the bit that actually generates the spark and it's all one piece rather than it being sort of, if you imagine traditionally, you'd have a coil pack and then you'd have leads and a cap. None of that anymore. It's all a coil stick. So for those V-twin guys that didn't know that, there you go. Perfect on that one. So you can do this, mate. Come on. <laughs> yes. There we go with that one as well. Happy days. Snocks. Yeah. I've completely forgotten the talk setting for the spark plugs. I'm pretty sure. I am. I know what it is. I got Come it. Come on. I got it. I got it. I got it. I was just a bit stage. I don't want to go on the big manual now, mate, to be honest. A bit of stage fright, sorry. So these rear cylinders are an absolute double. 
we go. So it's I taken you I'm about five minutes to get to those. About five, five minutes. minutes. Yeah. There you go. Can you see these? I'm not going to change these spark plugs because they're absolutely brand new. Look at that. I know we've only just rebuilt this motor. It's done about 200 miles since I've rebuilt the motor. So basically, I'm not going to change those spark plugs. That's how you change the ones in the front. So hypothetically speaking, let's put the same spark plugs back in. Could I? CR9? Uh, CR9 EK EK Yeah. What would you like me to do? Could you pass me a torque wrench, please? My beeping torque wrench that everybody seems to be impressed oh. with. Is it, is it in this beeping box here? Does it beep? Oh. Does it beep? Honestly, I've had to flip the torque Sounds like we're getting here. road runner out of the box here. <laughs> Thanks, oh, man. here we go. Here we go. So that beep in your ear is obviously when it's got to the torque setting that's required. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you. And the torque setting was? 18 newton meters. <laughs> uh, good call, Amber. <laughs> you, yeah. you, what about yeah. if I was blagging that then? You could have got me in right into trouble. Little tip, little tip. I want to dish out at this point in time. Little tip. So these bolts here that screw into the, uh, these are the ones that hold the coil packs down. So basically these are a mild steel screw going into an aluminium casing and they can corrode because they obviously are completely open to the elements underneath the tank. So if they get wet, they get horribly wet. So I put a little bit of copper slip on. The only time I'm really going to talk to you about where copper slip should be. Oh, this is a whoa. Hold on a minute, can of worm, it's about to be open. <laughs> <laughs> you mad people that, I love that argument, it's great, it's not an argument, is it? Let's face it, it's thread compound for crying out loud. There's a few hellos coming in, so give a wave. Hi! Hi! <laughs> can we find out who they're from? Kate, I'm thinking... Yeah, Stuart Brewer, Raymond Brown. Right. Enrique, does that say? Is that Enrique? Yeah. Hope you're well, Enrique. Surviving, buddy. How you doing, mate? Okay. Uh, we've got Stu. <laughs> Stu Brewer. Nice one, Giza. Katie Walker. How you doing? How you doing? Good stuff. I'll keep going. I'll keep rattling on. Otherwise, I'm just I'm easily distracted, I think, is the phrase. If you have a look at it, it's, it's easily distracted. I think my yeah. and father will contest that. <laughs> Faddy McFaddy Waddy. Really? <laughs> On my Torino V4, one of the bolts that hold the tank just spins. Can you fix this? Yes. Can it be fixed? Yes. How? Basically, here, I think you can see what's going on. Is this Faddy? Faddy, I'd really like to know. Can we say it again? Faddy McFaddy Faddy Mc Faddy Waddy. McFaddy Waddy. <laughs> I think I've seen that before, you know, on the Instagram page. Sure, you know about things. Shawaddy Waddy. <laughs> <laughs> that LP from the 70s. So good. So basically, these little captive nuts here that sit in the subframe, um, what they do is they stretch around here. So if you imagine, these are like rivets. When you push them in, they crush up, and they crush up to the inside of this little box section here. So what's happened is, is it's not been crushed down. Now I've got a tool, as it goes, a tool. Look at this, look at this. I've got a tool to fix this. So look, you two can go and buy this from eBay. No problems whatsoever if you wanted to. Basically, it's a, a rib nut tool. If you call it a rib nut tool, they'll know what you're talking about. You can put your rib nut tool in. Once you've got it off, which is fairly straightforward, doesn't look pretty, but it's the way off. And then you just recrimp them. No problems, dead easy. Easy fix, that one. Hopefully, an easy fix, anyway. Is that where it bulges it out, then, underneath? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, like yeah. a rivet, yeah, yeah. as soon as you... He just bought that RSB 1300 euro. Good man, well done. <laughs> There's nothing like like a spur of the moment thing. Straight on it. No Maybe messing. I love we, it. We are going to be the voice of reason in that particular for once. That's a bargain, bargain bike. Any titanium kits for the Italians? Bulk Titan kits. Bulk kits. <sighs> um, don't know if any good ones at the minute. Um, the reason being is because titanium bolts can be, um, they've got like a lower service life, that kind of thing. So 
not yet. It's not something I've kind of stainless kits, certainly something we've been looking into recently. Stainless kill kits too, because the standard bolts can be a bit furry. Because I think what they nickel coated or something. Yeah, but I'm just going to say while we're on that, like bolt kits and whatnot. If you buy an aftermarket stuff, just watch out. I've seen some of them that where they're meant to be nylon nuts, they're not. Uh, not the best. So keep your eyes on what you buy on that one. Ask questions. It's most important when you ask questions. It's really important you ask questions. Kate is cold and she needs to replace the stator on her AF1. Not today then, mate. Not today at all. I know. Don't, don't do it today because it's cold and it's... Go home, have a beer, mate. I would. Absolutely. Have a beer and chill out rather than fixing status in the cold. The only reason why we're here and, uh, and doing this is because we're inside and it's cut carpet on the floor. And a bench. And a what? And a bench. A bench. It's still bench. cold in here, though. We've got a bench. Can you say a big hello to Cameron? He's a big fan. Cameron, how are you oh, doing, mate? Right? I think this is Cameron. Is it? Here we look. Can you read that? Oh. Yeah, Cameron. How you doing, mate? Nice one. Oh, man. So these screws, this is where I lose one. It's the airbox screws. And these are standard. Concentration. Concentration. So that's why I've gone quiet, because I can't think straight and do stuff. At the same time, I'm only a weak and feeble male. So could I ask you, old boy? Yeah, just take these off of me. Thank you very much. There you go. Thank you. Thank See, you. I have my use. It's, yeah, it's not just a brief I have the screw holder. It's not <laughs> just a brief face. One, two, here we go. Yeah, three more on the side as well, bud. So when I've got these screws out and it all looks like I actually know what I'm doing, I'm just, just putting it all together. What I'm going to do is explain a few things that as we were going around and as we were going off sort of what we've, done, what we've seen on forums and Facebook pages, people have been, um, have been basically sort of done more work or made more work for themselves than they really needed to. These, the, taking all of this wiring off, to to take the airbox off is not something that's kind of really necessary and if you get it back or get it wrong it creates a big old problem with the electronics because you've got all of your injectors your sector injectors all mixed up that kind of stuff we've done one just recently thanks very much man. no worries thank you where um, two injectors on the rear were switched over and there was a big hole in the fuel in at 6,000 RPM. 6,500 RPM was a big, big hesitation. And you just got these two, took some finding mine. Secondary injectors, this little dry brake connector. When this goes back together, effectively, if you imagine, this is where the high pressure fuel comes through, through this dry brake connector into the secondary injectors. So you've got three bar of pressure behind that. That's why I'm smothered in it. But basically, just if that goes back together again, you've got to make sure it goes back together again with a click. Did you hear that little click? See, if it goes back like that, you know you're safe. But taking all the injectors off can be a bit treacherous sometimes. So, this is what I'm concentrating. A couple more. Let me know when you, <laughs> you finish I'm concentrating. I can't do too many things at the same time. I'm useless. Okay, and you can fold that back. Done. It just saves you so much effort, that does. There's so much stress. Because if, if any of you have had a quick look through the manual, trying to find out the orientation of these injector block connectors and stuff like that, it's a pain in the hoop. It is absolutely a pain in the hoop. Again, this here, a lot of people have not quite got this worked out just yet. These um, these adjustable velocity stacks here are fixed in in four places, so you don't need to take all of these these bolts out here. The bolts, the mounting bolts, are something slightly different. So these are around the back. There's two frames in this, on this to hold it or to support this assembly, and it's the bottom one you've got to undo, not the top one. So the amount of times we've had people with all of this come apart is 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 quite dramatic. But there's a hole to get to the center ones, just down the center, right down by the side of this little stepper motor here. So the stepper motor lifts them up and down. And there's a hole just down by the side, and you can see it in the velocity stack there. You ready? 
Yeah, yeah that's go on, do question. it. Come on. KG Moto, how do you know if it's the throttle body or the fuel injectors if you don't have a tester? I'm not too sure. The fuel, say that again, sorry. How do what you know? What are you talking about? I'm not too sure. That's okay. the only thing they wrote. Thank you. So got to say it again, then let's see if we can help. How do you know if it's the throttle body or the fuel injectors if you don't have a tester? Well, the throttle body is is basically is a mechanical is a mechanical part. The throttle body is the bit that's actually the casted part that's actually fixed to the bottom, or, or or the injectors are bolted into. So if you've got an electrical problem, it isn't going to be the throttle body. It'll be either a TPS or a uh, the throttle position sensor, sorry, or one of the injectors. Usually, if you've got a problem with one of the injectors, it will actually show up. It will actually show up as a fault code or a fault or an EFI light on it. Unfortunately, you don't tell us what bike you've got, but if you can tell us what bike you've got, I'll be able to give you a bit better idea, no problems. Oh, oh man, I'm firing through this today. That's because you've got your own <laughs> man's here, isn't it? That's you're the man, yeah. you know what I mean? Honestly, you're bringing glamour to my day now. This I'll see me wearing overalls tomorrow morning. <laughs> no, you don't get your hands dirty, do you? No, I've panic attacks. <laughs> Go on. A-D-I-G. Hi, guys. Looking to buy an 09 RSV4 onwards. Any buying tips or issues to look out for? So, cams, cam chain tensioners, valve clearances. It, the list goes on and on and on and on. But the difference is each bike is unique. So, there's no point in me standing there going, oh, this does this and this does it. There's absolute no need for it. Each bike is unique. The only thing you can do is protect yourself and make sure that you've got or you're buying a bike that has been looked after and maintained properly that is it so what i'd be looking for is crash damage i'd also be looking for good service history just making sure the valve clearances are checked regularly that's it i think the valve clearance is a is, is a it? big one if you're going to buy one so no. try and buy it pretty off someone who's like really into it but really is always works out well a lot of the time or most of the time so yeah this one's for you oh Come on then. From Michael Potter. Shout out for Snocks. I emailed him recently and instead of a lengthy lengthy email, he called me to talk about remap service, rear sets. You may remember I have a mug. Mark Potter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think you're yeah, old. I don't know. I'm speaking to a lot of people, yeah. but thank you very much. But a shout out to the, uh, a shout out to the Snocks himself. All right. Yeah. My work's done now. Have a nice <laughs> evening. <laughs> Say hi to Martin as well. Grayson Wood. <laughs> Mart, Martin. Martin, Martin, Martin Grayson Wood. Oh, Martin, hello, Martin. 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 Oh, Martin. Geezer. Maybe be down for a bit. We've still got loads of donuts. You ain't male. <laughs> do you remember when he came down with those massive donuts? Yeah. What the hell were we supposed to do with those? The whole sort of eating food thing when you're kind of nearly 50, it's uh, turned into a tricky thing because otherwise you end up... No, get it. Not a while off that yet. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Not Aprilia related. This is Matt. Oh my Eddie. God, I'm scared now. Who's already. This Matt. Who's this is Matt. Matt. Rummy. Rummy Matt. Matt. Yeah, Matt. Is there any truth, though, that dogs can't look up? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you snorted. <laughs> Well, my dogs, mate, if it helps, if they're on the floor, they go like this. So probably, I don't know, but an owl, if you want to know. Where does that come can from, you weirdo? You weirdo. All I, can think of is <laughs> the dead. Well, All I can think of is Sean at the dead, because they have right. an argument Where about that. Where did that come from? Dogs can look up. Right, <laughs> next one, next one, moving swiftly Where on. did that come from, you weirdo? That was brilliant. Why is the Gen 1 Torino so hard to sell? I have it I have it on an agreed value for 3K, but can't even get 2.5. Always get offers of 1.5. Ah, okay. What bike is it? Whereabouts Gen are, you? Where are you? What's your description? What's your mileage? What bike is it? Well, if you can tell us what bike it is and what we're looking at, then do you know what? Yeah, I can hope. Hopefully help. Right. I've got secret way of doing this watch this, front, is, this yeah. is the bit this is for the front yeah this is the bit that um makes my life a lot easier doing this because i'm i just check this before i make myself look like an idiot but yeah that's the one so 
You've got to say this with a massive smile. Griffin, so this, this, this is how I get the front. This here is how I get the, the spark plugs out of the front. So if you have a quick look, my sliding T-bar, okay, an eight inch extension, a UJ, a shorter extension and the correct plug socket. And the reason why we do that, and I can't move, we, we were due to have two cameras, but unfortunately we're down to one because I broke this morning. So we're going to have to make our way through this, but because you can't see what's going on now, that is what was going to happen. So I slide that down because of the way that the, the engine set up, you can slide it in, undo it, like that. Ta -da. So for the gentleman that was asking about the evidence of spark plug gaskets, look, there's actually oil on the end of that spark plug there. So oil has been coming down through the actual caps through the caps into the spark plug tunnel and has rested on the bottom because that's where it's caught. So we got to do spark plug gaskets on safety stuff. I'll try the second one. He just says Gen 120, 28,000 miles, and he's not sure. And how much does he want for it? 3K. I think he said he had it valued at. Okay. That's a reasonable price for that. It's just not in the right place at the right time. Is it mileage, that kind of stuff? Time of year, I don't know. Time of year, possibly. Hertfordshire. Where's that? Oh, mate, I don't get how much. I'm really sorry. Please don't think I was being rude. I wasn't at all. I'm just pretty useless when it comes to my... Don't get out. I don't get out much. That's probably what it is. I don't get out much. So three grand's perfectly reasonable to ask for the right for the right to own them. No questions. I wouldn't take offers of that. I think the chances, no chance, because they know that it's worth more than that. I would I wouldn't sell it. In fact, Tuono's value on Tuono's is going up quite dramatically, so I certainly wouldn't be uh, taking offers of that kind of thing off of anybody. Next. That's Any questions? That's it for now. That's it for now. Excellent. Cool. So, I'm gonna say, basically, so I'm going to start popping these spark plugs back in. I'm going to put the old spark plugs back in just because there's nothing wrong with them. I am going to have to change the spark plug gaskets. And I wish I had a second camera to show you what sure, was going right. on, what was going on with that. Unfortunately, I haven't. So sorry about that. Yes. There we go. Job is a good one. Is this the shop bike that is for sale? It is. The shop How bike would you tempt me either part with my Gen 2 or add to, or add to the stable? How much? Sorry. How would you tempt me? How would I tempt you? Sales pitch time. <laughs> da, da, da. Sales pitch time. So, right. This bike basically is a 2015 RF. It's number 391 of 500. It's had a recent engine rebuild. In fact, I rebuilt this motor because the previous owner to it let it go, basically. It absolutely detonated, so we completely stripped the motor back down to the crank crankshaft, had all the engine blocks cleaned, done, did a right nice job of it, back up, all fresh new parts, sorted, done, dusted. And that was less than 250 miles ago, and we've not ridden it since, just because we don't get the chance. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. But um, but basically what we're going to do is try and trade this one and sell this one, sell this one onto somebody else. And we're going to try and get something a little bit newer. I was just this Tuono who's going to buy me Griff now with all <laughs> Is this right? If he gets witnesses, one, I get I'm one. I've got to have at least a few witnesses here. <laughs> <laughs> See what you've started now, for crying out loud. Yeah, if he gets a Tuono, I won't. Like <laughs> Oh, don't sorry. forget me. Share one. No, I don't want to share. Fine. I'm not greedy. I am. Right. Oh. Um, so basically, uh, brand new, brand new tyres. If you have a look at the tyres, people keep laughing at me because there's yeah. some, but they're absolutely brand new. The um, 7.9 RRs on these. Uh, M7s. There, they're M7 RRs. Look, probably, like I said, done about 200 miles on yeah, them. Yeah, and it's all that fresh paint as well. Fresh paint. Fresh engine build. It's the one that we've done basically for um, sort of like the. Have we got is it Paso levers on these as yeah, well? Yeah, Paso, yeah. Engine case and covers, race maps, um, arrow exhaust, GP2 exhaust, uh, dyno sheets. I'm sure I've got some dyno sheets because this is the one that we did all the testing on. We've done some testing. I'm sure I've got dyno work at this one as well. 
You ready for more? Yeah. Is it me. worthwhile doing the Gabbro Race and Airbox mod from Faddy McFaddy? Yeah, absolutely. Gabbro knows what he's talking about. He's He's got proof. He's got absolutely got proof that it, that it works. In fact, I wouldn't hesitate to trust the man. He absolutely knows what he's talking about. Yeah, he proves everything that he says. There isn't any of this um, doubt or anything like that. Like, the guy's as good as his word when it comes to his work, and that's it. So absolutely, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate. Cool. Do you remember that question about the throttle bodies or the uh, fuel injectors? injectors? Yeah, it's for 2016 RSV4 RR. Can you buy aftermarket fuel injectors, or do you have to buy the whole throttle body front and back? No, you can. You can actually find the injectors. Their model number escapes me at the moment, but the injectors are available as a spare part, uh, I think, uh, in the aftermarket. So uh, I don't think you can get them from Aprilia, which is why, which is probably what you've actually come across and why you're asking that question. But the um, once you can uh, take one of the injectors out and identify, I've got I've got a ton of sitting uh, sticking around here, just second hand ones, no problems from buying. So if you want to get in touch and give us a shout, we can pop one in the post to you, no problems whatsoever. We have come across a few where they've gone dead, so. Um, it's not massively common, but like I said, if that's a, if you work out which one it is, if you need second-hand ones, I've got stonking second-hand ones in there, just sitting there in a bag, all sealed up nicely, waiting to go. Stu says hello from New Zealand. Stu! Stu! Uh, what, Simmons? So basically, yeah. It's, yeah. 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 Oh, I think so. Yeah, it Stu, is. It is. Well, it is. Buddy. It is. It absolutely is. Do you know why I know it is? Because I could feel a tremor in the force. <laughs> that man taught me how to lock wiring properly. Yeah, yeah, remember right. that. The flip of the thing, yeah. the flip of the, you know what I mean? I thought I was good until I saw him doing his work. Uh, school, I think you was school. Oh, school. Right, um, that's it, we've done Do it. Do I just explain what tends to be right. going on with Ethan? So here we go. This is a uh, this is the rocker cover gasket. So no, basically what it is, this is it's the spark. spark plug style part of the rocker cover gasket. Oh, okay. So if you imagine, this part here sits into the casing of the cover. It sits down over the spark plug tube. Spark plug tube sits down here because effectively the spark plug is buried down inside the cylinder head. Now the oil leaks through this surface here. So if you're in any doubt, you'll see there's a little hole on the front down here on the front this side, on the cylinder down this side. There's a little inspection hole on the front of the cylinder head. Sorry, on the side of the cylinder head that you can see. So if it's, if it's leaking excessively, it will leak out of there, which is exactly what it's designed to do. So you can see what's going on. But if you're in any doubt, these are not expensive. They're available on the website. Can I do a plug? Hit on with it. www.apworkshops.co.uk. Just go and have a look. V4 section. Basically, you'll find service parts. These are all there for you. No dramas whatsoever. Did you oh, say that? Hold on. You said www. So yesterday. Oh, right. Yeah, I did. apworkshops.co.uk. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I thought. So, 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 oh, I can't put that back in. It's dirty. Oh, my God. Do you want another one? On. There's a lot of stories of the valves dropping on the V4s due to valve springs breaking. Is there any recommended mileage on changing them from Raymond? Raymond, yes. Basically, there is um, there is recommended valve changes, um, especially if you've got an RF, especially if you've got uh, track use on these kind of bikes. It's quite well known that there's um, there has been valve spring problems. In fact, this bike was a part of that particular situation. So it was an RF. It was used on track exclusively, and it wasn't given the uh, correct service schedules so if you have a quick look in your owner's manual you would you come with your bike depending on what bike you've got you will see that there is a maintenance schedule for race bikes or bikes that are specifically used on track that service schedule is a lot heavier than the road going bikes effectively so have a quick look if you're not sure if you want to go onto the website, go and have a quick look in the sort of technical section that we've got. All of the workshop manuals are available for you to go and have a nose at, no problems. If you want to get and have a look in there, that will give you, if you haven't got one, but that will give you the um, the, the service schedules for race service schedules. So, yes, there is merit in that statement. Absolutely no question. Just educate yourself to know when to change them. That's it, plain and simple. If you're in any doubt, you can always get in touch with us. Like I said, we're always available on all manner of, social media and then snocks and amber and myself we all try and grab hold of the first, uh, all the emails first thing in the morning so you can email us no problems more more no cyber dying systems hi guys what is the service interval replacement mileage for ngk standard plugs versus iridium oh jesus man that's harsh that is that's harsh i don't know I don't know. I don't use Iridium plugs. I don't use... I've never Mate, used Iridium plugs. Explain maybe why we... 
Why don't you do So, um, it was service schedules that got changed. Uh, that, that, that basically the only advantage of having, I think, of having some kind of, of Iridium plug is the service schedules because there's certainly no um, improvement in performance, that's for sure, because we've tested that on the dyno and yeah, that, isn't, that isn't true on the bike that we tested it on. Now, whether that's the same on your bike or not, I don't know, like I said, but each one of the engines is unique. I don't think it made any performance difference. I think it was negligible, any difference. Could have been tire carcass, could have been temperature, to, engine warming up anything it wasn't significant enough to give it any change as far as i'm concerned but the service schedules are longer apparently on iridium how that works out for people is a completely different again it's a personal thing the problem you've got is that if i do a lot of short journeys on my iridium plugs they're more likely to not clean properly than they would be if i'm going to go and do and smash a million thousand miles and probably never need to change them, that kind of thing. So it all depends on the use. So for me to give you some kind of an idea about exactly what the difference is and how I would suggest it be different, I'd need to talk to you about your specific use. But again, just use common sense. I don't think, to be honest with you, there's any performance gain. So we're kind of recommend just the regular, I mean, what we're talking about, if it's for a V4, is it a V4 bike again? I can't remember. Doesn't say. Doesn't say. No, doesn't say. Suppose in both bikes, then I suppose they're both the same. Both the same. The DCPR 90s in V twin engines and CR 90 Bs or CR 90 KBs. God, just make me look bad again, don't you? Knowing these sparkle goats crying out loud. We've all got our hobbies, mate. Yeah, we've all, all got our hobbies. Get, I should get one. <laughs> Snocks. How good's your memory? Oh, God. What's the talk setting for spark plugs? 18. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Someone trying to trip me up. Yeah, well, what? Nigel Denley. Griff, Gen 1 Torono 04 on Tigger sounds like a bag of nails. Pull clutch in and it shuts up. Please help. Easy. Again, an easy fix. A really, really, really easy fix. One spare part needed. Now, on a Gen 1 Torono, they have a. Uh, <laughs> what's the chance of again? What's the gentleman's name again? Oh, gosh, I've got to find it in the um, Nigel. Nigel, was it? Yeah, Nigel. I don't. Really Nigel sorry. Denley, Griff, Gemma. Nigel, so, okay, Nigel, sorry, mate. Now then, uh, a clutch basically has a few separate parts or a few parts. Now, effectively, it has on the back, you have the clutch basket, which holds all of the plates. And on the back, there's a big primary gear, which is the part that actually gets driven by the crankshaft. Now, the, on the back of the clutch plate, if you imagine, there's spring dampers, which actually take some of the shock out. So if you imagine dumping the clutch on your bike, which is really heavy on everybody and everything in that equation but if you imagine dumping it then effectively what tends to happen is you shock the the um the clutch plates the friction plates which are made of a fiber so they break so in order to stop that they put dampers in and it's that damper that's worn now a couple of times you can be successful by taking the clutch drum out or the hub out and tightening and retightening them but the majority of the times it's just a case of Get another one off eBay because they're cheap enough and it's much quicker and much less hassle and much more reliable because a lot of the time it doesn't work. They're just, the springs are just worn. That's it. So go get another one off eBay. Dead easy to change, dead straightforward. You only need one gasket for that, which is your clutch cover gasket in stock on the website. <laughs> do I do that again? I feel like I'm in Aldi all of a sudden. Where's this happy shopper come from? <laughs> I hope that helps, mate. So, uh, yeah, no problems. That's dead straightforward. Really, really easy to fix. T-Rex Racing. Hey, up! Help! Me duck! Hey, up! Hey, up! Me duck! <laughs> hey, up for me duck! I wish we knew who these people were. Like, I know T-Rex Racing. Well, you've got Holland. This has just come through. Hi from Holland. Good job, guys. It's I can't even say that. Glad you're with us. Honestly. Do, do you know what, Amber? Just while we haven't got a question coming through, who is that funny mate? Faddy Waddy. Faddy Waddy. Mm -hmm. I've, obviously, I've got a T-shirt and a fleece to give away this evening. Uh, I just thought to myself, that's probably the best name I've heard in a long time. <laughs> so I've got large or XL. Do you know what? If you fancy something, send us an email. Uh, I don't know how you're going to prove your Faddy Mi Waddy Mi Waddy Haddy. <laughs> but if you want to send an email, I'm going to send you something out, mate. Brilliant. Mate, she or he, sorry, I shouldn't be so... Presumptuous. Yes, email us over. I'll get you something sorted. Awesome. Pretty sure this is Chromium, maybe. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to embarrass myself. <laughs> <Did that>? Chromium. 
Let's have a look. Chromium. Uh, chromium. Chromium. Oh. Great Chromium service one. from yourselves when you replace the spark plug gaskets on my RF. She was leaking at the rear bank earlier this year when you did the valve clearances. Thank you. Welcome. Paddy says thank you, Snop. Oh, I've got a minute. I remember that. I remember that bike. I remember yeah. that bike. Yes, I do remember that bike. Yes, we it got picked up and dropped off. I remember that. Hope you're well. Thank you very much for the opportunity to saw that. Excellent, amazing, great bike, lovely bike. Job done. Went nice and easy. Happy days. That's how it should be. Thank you. Is that it? Can I carry on now? All right, okay. We need the, um, basically, we need the... Uh, you that, well, funny sex, thank next? you, Snoxy. Just, I can't remember yeah, if I mentioned it. Yeah, large or XL, I'll just put one side for it. That's all we've got, unfortunately. Yeah, and could you pass us in? Which one, mate? Bits and pieces. <laughs> yes, oh yes, of course. Oh. This, the, this... <laughs> As a trainee, I'm like, oh. I get paid at the end of the week. Mate, you're, doing, you're doing a grand job, mate. You, mate, you, you get to come in tomorrow. Mate, mama is absolutely going yeah. to be proud. Well done. Just get that flux capacitor in there and you'll be all right. You're just full velocity stacks and I couldn't say it out loud. It's been a long old day. I'm really sorry. <laughs> That's great. I love it. Right, so we've got to bolt all of these back in. There's one thing that... Uh, there's a few pipes underneath. It's vacuum pipes we've got to watch. That kind of this is it. But I don't know if you've seen just how long it takes to change those spark plugs or to change those front spark plugs over, even with me rattling like a like a buffoon. <laughs> buffoon. A buffoon. I that for a a buffoon. Yeah, I haven't been called buffoon since school. Yeah, so, yeah it's quite a buffoon. It's a bit That's harsh. A good it's direct, one, isn't, it? isn't it? It's a bit harsh, isn't it? But you know what? Probably not. Not. Not too far from the truth. When I was at school. Tommy Sheridan. Evening, guys. Snox, Tommy. Snox. Tommy. Hello, mate. Hey, Tommy. How you doing? Snox, you look cold. Do I? Cabriolet, Tommy. When the air, when the roof's down, my mate, winter time. It does get cold, but I've got that somewhere, but I thought I'd show off my air. So there you go, mate. I hope you're well. Airbox screws. Yeah, go on then. Let's do this voodoo that you do. I'm getting into the groove of this now. Yeah, and honestly, I'm, you're all over this. Aren't everyone's going to expect me on the tools next week, Griff. I think I'm going to ramp, actually, when you think about it. Could get a personalised toolbox. That'd be great, wouldn't that it? That would be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would yeah. be good. Everybody loves tools. Well, we'd have a phone and a notepad in. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Right, like I said to you before, this dry brake connected for the secondary injectors. You've got to make sure that it goes back to get the proper line. Yes, Did you hear that? God, you couldn't have made that any better. Do you want another question? Yeah. yeah. To Faddy, <laughs> Faddy McFaddy Waddy. Hopefully my last question. Do you guys sell a gasket for the alternator engine casing as I have a slight oil weep on the special shoulder bolt that the plastic sound deadening cover bolts into, boots into? Say that again. Sorry, let me run that by me again. Is it a gasket for the cover? Gasket for the what alternator engine. Sorry, I can't oh, remember. I can't remember what bike. It was. Who? Go on, run it. Let's go. Let's see if we can sort it. Come on, let's see if we can sort it. Do you guys sell the gasket for the alternator engine casing? So yes. It's like oil weep. Yes. This is V4. V4, yes. I'd imagine. Yes, yeah. yes, we do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we do. We've got those on. Yeah, we've got those. It's got no problems. We've got alternator covers for V twins. We've got alternator covers. Just get away from the sealant and put a gasket there. Yeah, because it is, it is just casing sealant, isn't it, on those ones? Put a gasket on, it's reliable every time, then it's not a big problem at all. Do you nice want another good, one? Good quality. Yeah, keep going. This is Tony Monaghan. Tony. Tony. Hi, mate, Tony. Tony. How much work to add to the upper sh shower injectors and extendable intakes to the 1920 factory? Would it make much difference? <sighs> wow, that's a good one. So... Add in the secondary injectors and velocity stacks. Are probably not worth the hassle, truth be told. Um, I think at that particular point in time, because it'd be mapping, you'd mean mapping, it'd mean um, you can use the same ECU, no problems, but you'd need different mapping and you'd need it's the wiring in place as well. I think the wiring is actually in place. I'm pretty sure the wiring's in place as well for that. Can't can't remember offhand. It's been a long time, thank My technical questions like that. Christ, this time of the day. <laughs> you got more if you want them. Yeah, yeah. come on, yeah, fire them in. I'm, I'm scared. I am this is bit. Matt again. 
On older models, is there a way to limit leakage on the snippet valve? Asking for a friend. <laughs> oh dear. Where? Where does it come from? Uh, I think uh, get yourself out of the garage <laughs> and have a coffee or something, buddy. <laughs> we know you're going. <laughs> Do you want another one? Yes. Yeah. From though. Cyberdyne Systems. What is the highest mileage on a Gen One Milli Twenty you've ever had in the shop? Uh, Steve, uh, Steve, my mate Steve from Leicester has a Gen One, a silver RSB Gen One, two thousand and two that has over one hundred and ten thousand miles on it. Does an Aaron's as well Gen One? That's what I know. Aaron. Uh, yeah, yeah, he does as well. Um, I know Steve Norton, my mate Steve. It, oh, I keep bothering him, I, I, he's such a nice guy. He lives over in uh, Oz at the moment now. He used to, he used to come and help us out with all that tooling kind of stuff. He's got a, a Tuono that he couldn't bear to be without, so he took it back to Oz with him. That's got over 100,000 miles on it. I don't think he races it anymore, but he used to do a, a ton of track days on it, so there's plenty. And I believe there's a gentleman out there from Sweden or Switzerland or somewhere along those lines that's got one. 140,000 miles on one that I've seen on a Futura, which is just absolutely wicked cool. Wicked cool. Oh, this is, uh, can you tell? I'm, Concentration. I'm trying to fix this. You got it in? Yeah. Do you want another one? Yeah. Happy parts. My O5. Oh, yes. How you doing, man? <laughs> My own 520 factory in the back looks brilliant, but to be honest, this footage is simply brilliant. Love what you all do. All <laughs> do. Keep up the good work. It's just the best, that's why. Got your name on it already. I love it. A cool guy, man. Let's do this. Got one. No, sorry. Mate, honestly, the geezers from the Netherlands are just absolutely epic. Brilliant. Have I got to stop saying that? Is that a bit yesterday? What epic? What? Oh, brilliant. Hey, <laughs> Milk, brilliant. Depends how you say it, I guess. How would you say that? Well, epic. Yeah. Airbrush. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't yeah. say it. <laughs> you do it one way, can't you? Can that sounds do like. Can you do it one way? like a, a sofa advert for the sofa store. <laughs> epic sales. Two pieces of sweets. Sound like a sofa sale. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Do you want another one? Yeah. The mover. The mover. How much of a cock? Is <laughs> the old owner of my bike by ripping out the starter fuses? Ooh. I, I don't know. How much of a male appendage is he? <laughs> well, probably best answering that yourself, to be honest. I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't know what's gone on there, so I couldn't really give you a straight answer. But uh, it doesn't sound like you're too impressed, that's for sure. Right. What are we going to do next, then? What are we going to do here? Greg's or Subway? Yes, yes, yes. Say again. Greg's or Subway? Oh. Greg's. 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 And for, Greg's and for me. So I'm one of them weird, um, weird moss licking vegetarians, basically. And I know. So hey, you can get the moss stuff at Greg's, you know? Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. So I think Greg's is the uh, <laughs> is the way is the way forward because the Subway stuff just tastes a bit weird. I feel like donuts. And and you can get your confection. At, uh, at at Greg's the, the bakers. Next question, Greg. John Andrews. Hi, you guys. What are the benefits of remapping my O4? Oh uh, no, my Torono V4. Cheers and great live video. So basically, the good bit about that is is that um, the change in ignition tables and fueling tables um, are there to get round the compromises that Aprilia had to put in. Um, the tricky bit comes when you've got to answer the question, what kind of gains am I going to get from it? The answer to that is, oh, I've done it wrong, mate. I'm so sorry. What's wrong now? Can you pass me that pair of pliers, please? You know when you do that thing where you kind of drop her, uh, you, yeah, you drop something. I'm going to get him to kind of just try a little bit on this one. Just one second, bear with us. I'm going to get him to I need the countdown clock up. Boom! So the alternative... The alternative fueling, uh, fuel injection and ignition tables um, are basically not, or, or they don't have to adhere to these compromises that are pretty put in when they homologate the bike. The difference is with that particular point in time is you can tune the bike for performance rather than for uh, sort of 
economy and um, uh, and ecology's sake, if you like, and that kind of stuff, uh, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So it all 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 helps. It's worth doing. You might get gained somewhere. You might not get gained somewhere. Each individual engine is different. Do if you really fancy it, have a quick go at dyno in the bike before you put it on then change the CCU and then dyno the bike afterwards again. Make sure you get an air fuel trace because effectively the dyno sheets with the power of it, it's just really waving and rubbish really. So effectively it's all about the AFR ratio and that's all it is. The, try, the better you get your air fuel ratio together and the better you get that under control, the more power you're gonna make out of the bike. That's it, plain and simple. Like I said, the rest of it's just, just really waving. <laughs> Next question. Not, very, not much of a quick, no, no question. Stephen yeah, Murphy, yeah. evening AP team, loving the late night in the office live. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Steve, how you doing, mate? Nice one. Thanks for getting in touch. So, um, I well, I've got a on. question. Go on. Are you guys going to NEC live? Yes. Yes. We are filming, for crying out loud. Big thanks to uh, my friend Tom from Motor Loyals. He got me some of those complimentary tickets, which I've never had before, which is brilliant. So Motor Oils, massive thanks for those. We are guests of Motor Oils. Basically, um, we are going. We are going to be there. We are going to be floating around. And I believe we are going on... Monday. Monday. Monday, Is yeah. Monday? Monday. Monday. So we're going Monday. We will be there Monday. If you are there by any chance on Monday, and if you want to come say hello, please just come find us. Griff will be signing autographs. Just shut up. Cardboard cutouts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shut up. Empty he's Greg's like, I've even bought, bought an ink pad so he can get his handprint. Oh, God, it's horrible. Do you want another one? Yeah, yeah, go on. What is the best update to do on a basic RSV 04? Best update? Oh, I'm, I'm a guess upgrade. Yeah, sprockets all day. Sprockets all day. It's okay, mate. Yeah, that's brilliant. Just bring that back there slightly. Like Don't that. that for you, then. Yeah, if you yeah. would, my old sunbeam, that would be absolutely spectacular. Sunbeam? Sunbeam? Yeah. You, you are, are my sunshine. sunshine. My only sunbeam. sunbeam. <laughs> you big anyway. So did you say it was gearing? Gearing, yes. yeah, massively. On, a, on an 04 RSV, basically. It does depend exactly on what um, what kind of use you're going to get out of your bike. But basically, we were going to do a film on it, but it just it just got so big and so incredibly complicated, I couldn't just couldn't get it done. Another dry brake connector. Please be careful with this dry brake connector when you're putting it together. It's got to click together. Okay, mate. Lower that for a second. There we go. Oh, come on, dirty fingers on it. Oh. Um, yeah, gearing. Gearing for an 04 RSV. So, look, depends on what kind of... They come standard and 1640. If you wanted to change that, oh, you're not going to use... Gen 1 or Gen 2, is it like registered? No, it's an 04. He said it's an 04. So we're going to consider it. I reckon it's going to be a Gen 2. Yeah. Should we do both? Let's, do, Let's both. do both. So... Gen 1 comes standard, 1742. So we recommend going down one on the front and up two on the back. So 1644 on those, and you can use, depending on what tyre, and this all does depend on what tyre you use, you can still use the same chain. So it runs it a little bit further forward. If you're not sure if you're running a non-standard size tyre, then run 110 links and just bring everything back slightly just to clear it. So... But Gen 2s, they come standard 1640. We recommend you change to 1542 because that means that you'll get better acceleration. You lose about five, six mile an hour off the top end. But if anything like that, I can't see the top end anyway because I'm, I can't ride that fast anymore anyway. But... Neither, neither can the dogs. Matt said the dogs can't look up. <laughs> so they ain't going to see up the top end either. <laughs> where? Hello? Where? Where, Matt? Where did you get that from, you weirdo? Jason Wood, he's going to miss you at the NEC, so can you post him an autograph, please? <laughs> Stop it. Sounds like a serious request, Griff. Stop it. No. You've got to come, you've got to help him out a little bit. No. Is this Jason Woodrow? Is it? Is it Jason Woodrow, is it? This is Jason Wood. It just says Jason Wood. Or oh. Jason Wood. <laughs> you ring me. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Do another one? Yeah. Tony Monaghan? Tony! 
Yes, that is the next one. Sorry. Dino my 19 to owner, but I only got 151 rear wheel. I rode, but I rode it there through heavy rain and had the traction set to minus eight. Is that going to explain why it's so low? No, uh, really good question. 151 out of 2019 Tuono is um, is a little bit low, but the problem you've got is, is it a little bit low compared to what? The difficulty is on a dyno is that a dyno is only ever good as a comparative tool. It depends on temperatures. Your outright thing can depend on external temperatures, cell pressure, what they call cell pressure inside these inside the dyno room itself. The problem you've got is that a dyno is only ever good as a comparison. So if you put it on and says 151 uh, and then you do some modifications and it says uh, and, it, and it goes up, then you know you're winning. If it goes down, you know you're losing. So effectively, each dyno is different. Each dyno has its own characteristics. So if you look at your dyno, you put it on, it says 151. You take it to one of the road, it might say 165. Change your tyres, it'll give you a different reading as well, won't it? Race tyres, apparently, I've seen race tyres um, take as much as like five, six brake horsepower yeah. out of a bike, just having soft compound tyres on. So it's it's mental, some of the things that I've seen with that. A lot of stuff. things but can change it. The only thing is, like I said, is, is a, a dyno is only ever good as a comparison. That's it. So if it says 151, as long as that air fuel line's perfect, which is the bit that all counts about. Like I said, the air fuel line along the bottom is a bit that actually makes the difference. The bit that goes up the top, it's just it's just a number. It doesn't make any difference. Keep going. Steve, Nearly there. Stephen Hugh. Hi, guys. For home use, would you go for an Aberstand or a proper bike lift? Oh, Aberstand. Aberstand. I love Aberstands. I absolutely love them. Hence the reason we've got them in stock now on the website, basically. The reason being is because we see so many people in this workshop. And we have them on a bench. We kind of we do this every day. So we've got a bench that lifts up and down and stuff like that. So it stops us from kneeling on the floor. But that genuinely changed the way that we do business in this building. Once we've got one of those, that was it. They are so cheap and so effective. The only thing you can't do with an Aberstand is change the swinging arm. The rest of it, you've got covered. You can do everything else with one of those. No problems whatsoever. I absolutely love them. And I can't sort of uh, recommend them enough. It's to the point where we're actually stocking them in the shop. Next. Cyberdyne systems, do all Gen 2 status always fail regardless of year, bike year of manufacture? So, no, no, they don't. 2008 onwards, there is an engine number change, 8172926. Anything higher than that basically is, um, it already has the system in it, or it has already has the, because he's okay that always has the um always have already has the bits in it so if you go for a 2008 onwards bike it already has it in there um no they don't all go it does depend entirely unfortunately the sort of the answer to that question or the answer to the sort of would be that life the universe and everything on those but the situation is that there isn't a straight answer to that question no not everyone's got to go keep your eye on it what we've suggested in the past to people is you're up with now? No, I'm sure we'll get this clip on here. Was the clip missing? Yeah. Oh, so I'm trying to do two things at once, look. Failing miserably. Bear with me a minute. Bear with me a second. Oh, I don't know how it goes on. It's sort of. Oh, oh, it's it's gonna sort this oh is it? It's yeah. Give me a sec. You have to Back. slide it in with the little tabs first. It's got like little tabs. I'll hold them up, Ice, and I'll just stand here. Just, <laughs> just, just, just show it off. Stand and look good. That's the yeah. I've got the panel. I'm not sure how to do that. No, not every generator on a Gen 2 is going to go. But what I would suggest is that before you do anything else, and before one of the best mods that you could make to one of those, if you're not sure and it's past that number, like I said, I think that the number is um so, it's just fell down again you little spring that's what i'm saying i can't do more than one job at a time i'm absolutely useless i'm going to go back so i got it i got this here we go I'm trying to do two things at once failing miserably at both of them i'm a weak and feeble male for crying out loud just blame it on a long day griff that's what i do to be honest <laughs> 
Sorted, jumped on, right. No, Gen 2s, basically. Go on to eBay. Have a quick look for a tiny little uh, digital dash charge meter, like a little digital clock, basically, it looks like. But it actually shows you your charging rate. So a voltmeter, a little digital voltmeter that you can fix into your bike. You can mount it just by your clocks. And it just tells you what's going on. So effectively, your charging rate should be somewhere between 12.8 to 14.5 volts. If it's out of that range, then you're either discharging or you're overcharging. You can see what's going on. But the thing is, the bike is standard, hasn't got any kind of voltmeter on it that's reliable because the ones on the dash aren't reliable. So get an external one. You can wire it up to, if you want, want to run wires all the way down to your bike, you can wire it up to the front brake light switch because that comes live when you turn the ignition on. You can take your power supply from there and you can plug an earth onto the subframe somewhere, no problems anyway. But go and check it because it just keeps you, it keeps you ahead of the game, that's all. Just lets you know what's going on. No down and on whatsoever then. Hopefully that'll help. Thanks, Brav. 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 Yeah, it's all come. Brav, isn't it? Brav. Nice Brav. <laughs> Uh, John Andrews, why do you think Aprilia don't show up to most of the bike shows? Because in this particular situation, Aprilia turn up to the ones that are important. That is how it works. Unfortunately, in this country, we're such a small market, such an insignificant part of the Aprilia market, that basically we don't get a look in. Now, if you go to the, I think, ICMA, or, or however they want to pronounce it, or however they want to, it's E-I-C-M-A, which is the Italian show. They turn up there every time because there's massive amounts of bike sales difference. Unfortunately, the amount that we sell in this country isn't sufficient enough to be able to sort of expend the um, or to spend that kind of thing on their marketing budget. The UK guys don't stand a chance. I think the last time I did a bike show, I did a bike show at the NEC. I think it was just shy of a million quid to have a car of a stand there for. For, what was it for? It was 14 days then, about 2004, 2005. It was just shy of a million quid it cost over on there. It's just not worth it. Just not worth it. It's just so expensive. And if you have a quick look around the world, people are doing the same all over the world as well. They're just not turning up because people are asking so much money for it, and there isn't that much money in the in this in the trade. That's it in that in that business. So that's, that's why primarily sports bikes or the fact that it's got scooters and everything worldwide. Absolutely, scooter sales outweigh motorcycle sales by millions, absolutely millions, no doubt about it. So the only thing you can do is just kind of follow that money. If you haven't got that money, then, uh, then basically in that market, it doesn't stand it, it's sound economics. It's not nice though, but <laughs> is what it is. Hope that helps. Next question. Wave up for Jerry. Jerry. Hmm. Jerry. Ah, Jerry. 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 Ah, Jerry. 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 He's my Jerry. I said, Gus is a movie star. Gus is a movie star. Just got to remember. So I'll get out of the way there. Gus, hey, is, ah, Jerry. Gus is a movie star. Also, are we all getting overtime? <laughs> yeah, we're That's quizzing. Question. We're quizzing tonight, Jerry, I'll tell you, mate. That Ooh. wasn't Jerry. That wasn't Jerry. It just says oh. the big one. Oh, the big <laughs> one. Oh, the big one. Yeah, it's a bit of overtime tonight. That'll do nicely. You're going to do a video living with with the Chereg 660. Yes. it's We've got a list of to-do things upstairs. And um, and basically, we've got a list of bikes that we need to get hold of. It's just finding them. Dealers, that, the problem we've got is that, if you imagine, dealers know we're not going to buy a bike off them or rarely that we're going to buy a bike off them. So they rarely let us get hold of them so we can film and that kind of thing. But if you know of anybody that would be, thank you very much. You're welcome. That was well handed over. I've done all right, didn't Mate, I? That was yeah, not just good at passing stuff. That was impressive. Done. How long was that? That's an hour uh, so far. Is it an hour? An hour. Yeah. Okay, an hour. An hour will it usually take you? What if, <laughs> it's probably about 20 minutes if I wasn't You're talking going. 15. Come on, <laughs> mate. Going wrong. <laughs> So basically, the uh, situation is that, uh, yeah, unfortunately, the market isn't big enough. So Jerry's around, Gus is that orange Chevy behind, has knocked his head there, which is my van, my American van that I've built the engine in and stuff. Any more questions? Yes. This is the mover. 
What <laughs> method is best for getting the better voltage to battery on a Falco? I.e. revving over 1.5k, the volts drop to 13.1. 1. So on a, um, you, you've either got one of two things. You've either got uh, a, a regulator rectifier that is misbehaving, or you have a the wire that runs from the regulator rectifier runs through um, two 30 amp fuses and through a block connector about here on the Falco. And it's that union which can give you a problem sometimes. It's certainly worth having a quick look to find out what kind of voltage you're getting directly from, if you have a quick look, directly from sort of, throughout the throughout the system so you can see what's going on but like i said could either be a regulator rectifier or, or that block connector the 30 amp fuses can do that as well i've seen that happen when you pull them out and they're dirty again because if you have a look on the falco the seat runs if, this, if the, the rain will run down the back of the rider and it will run underneath the seat because the back of the seat just because of the way it is that's it so have a quick look at those and hopefully that will give you an answer Pant boy 72. Whole mm. job and no cup of tea. How did you manage that? So what? You did the whole job of no cup of tea. How did you manage that? Oh, because I've had far too much coffee <laughs> earlier on in the day. Can you not tell? <laughs> I'm going to tell you my mouth dry as anything. <laughs> <laughs> <What's that? laughs> Captain Barb. Captain Barb. What will happen to the tuning and after sales parts that alter emissions if the government get their way and stop tampering with machines? Nice bit. I don't know. I don't know what the legislation is, but basically I think as it sits at this point in time, it will just have to do what they do in Germany, which is have what's known as type approval. So type approval means that every aftermarket item has to be uh, inspected by the local government or by the, the, the transport government to make sure that the part is suitable for that particular bike and fits into certain regulations. If we have a situation where... Uh, that is no longer, or that situation comes to the UK, then we will have to either comply with that situation or uh, as, a, as a dealer and as a seller, but certainly once the bike is out into the market, it's entirely down to yourself. At this particular point in time, there's no way to prove how loud your bike was or how dark your visor was or whatever that kind of thing at this point in time or whatever you want to do to it. So there's no testing, testing for it. So... Once uh, it just means that you might have to just sort of the parts or parts of uh, the type of parts that you get might just need to be a little bit different or not for race use, sir, if you can't get my drift. Richard Lewis, would a high mileage put you off buying a Gen 2? No. Simple. Not at all. Not at all. Same engine as Gen 1. Very, very similar engine to Gen 1. Really robust. Great engine. Basically, check your chassis parts. Make sure they're okay. The only thing with the Gen 2 is the stator. Just look at what the state of history is of it. That's the expensive bit. It's £1,100 to replace the stator on one of those for one of the later ones. At this particular point in time, if you can work that into your deal when you're buying a bike or you have proof that it's been done with the genuine Aprilia article, then that bike is worth its weight in gold because they are brilliant. Next question. Imran, out of 10, how reliable would you say the RSV4 is? Which one? Can't That's answer you that. get, I'm afraid. I can't answer that. I cannot answer that, honestly. I can give you a rough idea, but the problem I've got is that the 09s, earlier ones, oh, uh, the, the, the early production ones did have their problems, the ones from 2015 on, which have been really, 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 really good. Really good. In fact, 2012 onwards, rare you get problems with them, rare. But 2015 onwards seems to be a good point where they kind of – they really got their act together with the reliability and it just seems Find strong. Out. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Out. I'll stand by that one, no question. What, from what we see in this workshop anyway, there may well be other guys out there that know different, but from what we see here, I'm going to say 2015 onwards, if you can afford one of those, uh, go for one of those, especially sort of like uh, Tuono's as well, that kind of stuff, because the Tuono factories have been pretty, pretty bomb the proof. Yeah, yeah, the 1100, yeah. they've been bomb proof so far. Brilliant, brilliant bikes. Mad as a box of frogs. Far too fast for the road. Scare the absolute bejesus out of me. Did Chris sell that SP? Yes. Is yes. that what you're going to say? Yes. 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 That's it. That's yes. it. Who said that? The big one. The big one. The big one. Yes. Who is this big one? So yeah. listen. Listen. This SP. The big one. He is the big one. Come on, man. I know. It sounds like a baddie in a James Bond show. That's what I'm thinking. Does he sound like the honey is yeah. 
So basically, um, it did he, uh, yes, it did. If you are looking for an SP, we have SPs. We have a couple of SPs for sale at this particular point in time. Yes, he did, but they are strong money these days, and I don't blame him one bit, one bit. Absolutely, he did exactly the right thing. The guy is an absolute legend. Next question. It's not a question, it's the mover again. My 30 amp fuses were the ones that I was talking about earlier. So what did he say? What happens if they remove those? Then there, yeah, that's really bad. Yeah, if you remove those oh, yeah. or if you bypass those, that's like horribly bad because that's the fusible link for the entire engine management system. So yes, that's pretty rotten. And whoever did that does need the to male appendage step well. away oh. from the toolbox. That's kind of thing. You should not be doing that. That is absolutely stupid. So if you don't have those, uh, uh, the mover, if you don't have those in, put them in, get them in there because you, they should absolutely be in there. That is not the right thing to do. John Andrews, do you do a collection and delivery service? We don't do the we collection and delivery directly, but we have a man, Mr. Lee Costello, the man, the myth, the legend himself. He is my friend and he's been with us for a very long time. He has been absolutely the best, most reliable uh, 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 courier we've ever come across. If you ever need anything moving to and from here, give us a call at the shop. We will forward on you his number. He is, like I said, he is absolutely He's a prof worth. professional, full-time motorbike courier. Yes. Not going to turn up with a pallet to try and get your bike on the back of your van. <laughs> Do you remember doing that? Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. yeah, I've seen some bikes moved out of here by some terrible, some yeah. dodgy articles. But Mr. Lee Costello is, like I said, absolutely recommended without any question whatsoever. Lee Costello Transport, I think that's what it is, yeah. isn't it? You have to look, just look up Lee Costello Transport. Any known issues with the Shiver 750? No, no Shivers and Dust Doors. I was talking to a gentleman earlier on called Dom. Dom is absolutely the man. Uh, he came, rang up and said, um, I've got a Dorsodoro, Shiver Dorsodoro, very, very similar kind of scenario. But basically, we very rarely see them because they rarely go wrong. They're usually pretty reliable. There isn't many of them, but we rarely see them. The reason why we rarely see them is because they don't go wrong. There's only one thing that really goes wrong with those, and that is like so there's some intake pressure or some, some atmospheric pressure sensors. Other than that, it's just crash damage. There's That's too it. many in the country, though, is that? They're quite a rare thing. Yeah. They're quite a rare thing, but you know what? Like I said, they rarely go wrong. So not a bad bike. Not my cup of tea at all, but, but basically... Uh, I, I, I think they're uh, you know they're all right. This one's Imran again. If you had to stop working on Aprilias and could only work on one other manufacturer of bike, what would you be, what would it be and why? Oh, answer oh. this one, mate. Oh, on the spot. Oh God, that's harsh, man. <laughs> what do you do? Come a lorry driver for sixty k here instead. <laughs> In fact, would it be a bike riff or would you not go on to cars? No, no, I wouldn't do cars. No. Like American cars? No, 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 I'm sick of welding, so no. Um, I would go and do, I would, I, I've got, as a lot of you know, I've got a little thing. Jerry with, says, don't say Honda. Terry. Jerry. Oh, Jerry. Jerry would, yes. <laughs> shit. You're a bad man. <laughs> so, um, shit. Uh, oh, God. What do, uh, say sorry, it. Just say it. Sorry, Jerry. Don't care. Don't care, I would fix. I have a little thing with old vintage monkey bikes. I've got a little thing with sort of Daxes, fold down frames, mini bikes, that little cub engine, that kind of thing. So mini bikes. So unfortunately I would go and fix mini bikes for a living because I think that the little hump Dax and Honda monkeys, Z50s, that kind of stuff are absolutely wicked cool. And I think a Grom is the modern version of everything that we used to build when we was kids. And basically, that's why I've got one, my painted on Zebra. But I love it. And I think that's what I'd do if I wasn't going to do it. I could not fix something. I'd, I'd fall apart if I couldn't fix something. So uh, I'm, I gotta, I'd go and do Honda monkey bikes. <laughs> We've got a question. Gonna... You've got a couple, but this one just made me laugh a bit. And it's Tom. You know it's going to be bad. Tom. Tom from Motor. Yeah. Tom. Christ. 10W40, Tom. All right. <laughs> Do you really want me to read it? He's in Whamageddon as well. He is in yeah. the Whamageddon and he is on and I've missed it so far. I heard Slade this morning, which, which made me run for the hills. Go on, Tom. You're Just how it. big is your head? How big is my <laughs> Swede? <laughs> it's a 60. In our eye, Tom, you know all about that. Next is it question. big? 
So look. Yeah, he's got a point, you know. <laughs> is it your hair? Is it? It's my, it's it my might hair. Look look. It might because I have got big hair at the minute, but there we go. So, Tom, I will remember that. No fish and chips for you, boy. <laughs> fish and chip Friday. This is Cyberdyne Systems again. A bit of a long shot. Can you recommend any winter hand guards for the Gen 1 Toronto that won't cause clearance issues with the front fairing? No, Hangar, there isn't no. such a thing. No, I don't think there, there isn't. They will always, or they will always catch. Unfortunately, on the oh, Tono, they run so tight anyway that there's always going to be something that will catch. But um, I know it sounds horrible, but it, you might have to just put up with that for a little bit. So if you have soft hand guards like um, like the muff things, if it's really cold, because to be honest with you, I've done it before, man. I've commuted in the cold when it was really cold, and the only thing that really helped was those big horrible hand muff things. Really. You know, yeah. Well, like granny slippers on your hands. Christ, it was cold. And I had to ride a CX500 as well, which was purgatory at best. But basically, I put these on and it helped no end. Otherwise, you're riding along, grabbing all of the, the cylinder. Yeah, side, getting, like grabbing that, down, and warming and doing that and warming your hands as you go along. But there isn't any that will do it, so you've got to make do. So I think in that case, some, some muffs would be the idea for you. Go for that one, man. I would. I, I know it worked for me. Richie said from Insta, when did they stop producing the Gen 1? Gen 1 Tuono. Oh, so, yeah, sorry, Tuono. I missed a bit. Gen 1 Tuono. <laughs> so uh, the last bikes were produced, I believe, um, September. So the last, the next model came out September 2003. So they were made up to 2003. RSV and Tuono was made up to September 2005. Okay. Darren asks, how do you remove the swing on bearings? Darren, how do you remove it? Which ones? There's two either side. There's two big ball bearings on um, one side, which you can use a long drift to punch out. And the um, the we needle about, bearing. Yeah, okay, that's what they probably... We're on about the needle. Oh, is it on about the pivot bearings or we're on about the suspension bearings? It just says swing arm bearings. Okay, so swing arm bearings. We'll do both. Uh, there's a needle bearing on the other side, which you have to get a puller for or replace because basically they're so cheap, it's not even worth the worry about it. Just put fresh ones in if you're going to replace it. The bearings on the other side, like I said, they just knock out with a with a, with a drift. The actual suspension bearings underneath, 17 mil socket. I know it sounds really bad. No, it doesn't. I don't care. But I've got some special tools. These were given to me by my friend, Sir John Griffin. I don't know if John actually remembers sending these, but you see these? These actually fit inside the bearings. I believe there's some kind of valves outside of an automatic gearbox because he's a gearbox guy. But John Griffin is my friend and he's a cool guy. Basically, he gave us these, and uh, they just slide inside the bearings, and you can just basically put a like a punch into that pit of the hole into there, and just and away you go. Job done. Or a seventeen mil socket. Seventeen mil socket will work. Seventeen mil socket, or like, use a long one. No problem. But a seventeen mil socket will work. You got a big head needed for all that knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Tom again? That's, that's Jason it, with that, is that's all, that's all it is, though. That's it. It's just this. I can't remember anything else. I walk outside of this door and I'm sort of drooling from the side of my mouth. Cyberdyne says, thank you for all the quest uh, answering his questions. He's going to go with some Kai Kai's heated gloves. Yeah. Oh, heated gloves, man. That sounds posh. What? How posh is that? Mate, fair play to you. Adam heated Stratford. gloves. Stratford. He says, hello, checking in. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? Adam Stratford. Adam, Hi, Adam, how you doing? How you doing, mate? Nice one. Checking in. Thanks for checking in to us, honestly. It's um, it's cold outside, but it's warm in here. The big one. Topic on the Big Board Kit Gen 2. Big Board Kit Gen 2? That's it. What's he saying? That's it. What? That's all he said. Topic on the Big Board Kit Gen 2. Oh, he wants to talk about the Big Board Kit Gen 2? Well, I guess so, yeah. 1060 kits. We've got our own pistons that we designed for these uh, kits. We recommend a 1060 kit. We've got them in stock, no problems. You can go to the website, give us a shout if you need anything or any more information on these. But the big four kits, we recommend a 1060 kit. The reason why we recommend a 1060 kit is because if you go 1103, it makes the liners very, very thin. They can deform and they can certainly, and it's been proven to do on many, many occasions. It's very, very difficult to do. Uh, it kind of takes out that little idea of reliability, whereas boring out, to 1060 and re nicocillin has been unproven to be quite reliable. In fact, it's been proven to be very reliable as it goes. So um, absolutely, I would suggest that um, that's the reason why our pistons are designed to be able to give you that slight more compression. They've got slightly deeper valve pockets. 
placed correctly, etc. Unlike a lot of the copies that we've seen right, floating about, but definitely you can be good for about 20% gains right the way from about 4,000 onwards all the way up to the red line. The, um, the the results are there to be seen, no problems. You combine those with power commanders, airbox kits, exhausts, full systems, that kind of stuff. You can be seen north of 140 brake horsepower. Richie says, wicked show tonight, loved it. <laughs> Thanks, Richie. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> nice one. Greg, any suggestions on getting down your driveway in the ice? Yeah, carefully. Greg, yeah. Your feet down. No, it was Greg this morning. Oh. It was Greg this morning. Respect, so, Greg. So, mate, Greg, Respect. He, turned up, he turned up at the top of the road and he stopped it. It was an ice <laughs> slick here. It was an absolute legend. And, like, he turned up in this way that I was like, you are a maniac. But absolutely brilliant. So he turned up at the top of the industrial estate. And I said to him, look, man, just don't come down here. The cars crunched and crashed everywhere. It looked like basically because there's trees overhanging it, the road was wet. It was an absolute ice slick and it was not worth risking it. No, no. Because dropping a bike is not worth it. Absolutely not worth it. But, but Greg, I hope you got home warm and got a chance to warm up, mate. It was good to see you this morning. And I will talk to you soon when we've rearranged it, when it's a little bit safer for you. But... Good to see you this morning, mate. Sorry we didn't get to make you a brew, uh, but we will see you soon. Thanks very much. Take care of yourself, mate. Stefan Davies. Hi, guys from Poland. I'd like to ask about 08 Gen 2 Tomorrow cam chain tensioners, both fitting and cost. Do you do call-outs? To Poland? Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to go to Poland. Yeah. Right, fair, we'll come. Yeah. No yeah. dramas. I'll go to Poland, no problems. Absolutely, man. Honestly, that's, it's, it's a pretty straightforward. I believe the cam chain tensioners are about... 80 quid, something no, like that. Just over 90, I think. Okay, yeah. just 90 quid. 90 quid each. It's a pretty straightforward operation. The one on this side's much easier than the one on this side. And the only reason the one on this side's a bit of a pain in the backside is basically because there's a water accumulator in the way. So what I use is one of these. It is an eight millimeter. Oh, hang on a sec. Did you drop that on my head? <laughs> an eight millimeter ball end socket. So if you can see this, here, see the ball end, that gives you sufficient uh, um, uh, sort of uh, ability to wiggle around the, the hoses and to be able to undo it. You've just got to, it's just, that's a bit you've got to put in there to undo it, but that will get you in there, mate. That will get that one out. It's a pain in the hoop, but like I said, it's doable, no problems whatsoever. Dead straightforward, dead straightforward. Nice and easy, and yes, I will pull out over to Poland, no problems. I'd love to come and see Poland. I've never oh, been. Are we all going though? Just yeah. So I want to yeah, get that confirmed. On yeah. tour, baby. On tour. Paul Hemming. Hello, Griff. I'm the guy that met your bro down in Wales. A bit cryptic. Sorry. No, it's not at all, mate. You are a star in my family. You are an absolute legend. It is so good to hear from you. I hope you are well. My mum and dad are moving out and away from there, so you probably won't see Phil floating about in Raider anymore because. They are, they're all kind of moving away back towards uh, a little bit closer. But thank you, mate. You are a good man and you are blessed. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. I do love my brother. He's quite a character, isn't he? But uh, you know what? He's a good man. Thank you very much. Two th he says 2019 R1 or the 2017 RSV port RF. Two which R1 was it? 19. I haven't ridden one. I haven't ridden one to compare, so I don't know. But I do love that engine in the R1. It is absolutely I think stunning as well. It's I think nuts. I think absolutely nuts. I love that Yamaha. It is so good. But the RF, it's an RF in it. Done, fixed, finished. There's millions of uh, millions of R1s about, but there ain't many RFs. Finished. There's discussion over. <laughs> They're just laughing now at the fact you said ball end. <laughs> Well, it's good we've got humour going. I didn't know. No, I just says, what's the top thing you eat once for Christmas? What is the top thing each of you want for Christmas? I'd like a pet cow. <laughs> a pet cow? Yeah, okay. or a pet cow. A pet cow. Two. Yeah, two. Two, two pet you cows. Can't one. You can't have one cow. They'd be lonely. Yeah. 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 We have yeah. best friends. I want two pet cows, please. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Want a brown one for chocolate milk. And... <laughs> <laughs> You've thought about this, haven't you? Yeah, yeah of course I have. you put some thought into this, haven't you? Yeah, I do. So, what do I want for Christmas? I just want to see me kid. I just want to see. I just want to. I just want to hang out with my hang out with my girl. That's it. That'll do. And and, and some socks. Because I know what I want. Two bags of dry roasted peanuts, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. Some socks. I've got socks coming out. Socks. <laughs> yeah. Some more bloody no, socks. Mine will get me some though, guaranteed. 
<coughs> Excuse me, COVID. That's it. Don't, sorry, you, you can't say that. I can't, can't do can't, that. Can't, can't, sorry. That's it. Huh? That's it. That's it. All done. Right. Okay. That's it then. Thank you very much for joining us. I really, really appreciate it. This is uh, one. If you want to come and uh, sort of see more of this, then just comment down below. Let us know what's going on. Oh, there was one on there that I did miss out. Same time next week. Well, <laughs> maybe not. But no. I've got a little feeling that this has probably been all right for us and everyone else. So maybe not next week. <laughs> uh, maybe knows we was... might do it now and then, I think would be the words. What do you reckon, Griff? Yeah, 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 it's all right, isn't it? I'm up for it, yeah. How about Yeah, we can do yeah. it. Anything we're going to think about is a better job. Better job than a quick job than a, than a, than a spot. Well, anyway. I just wanted a breakdown tour <laughs> on the next one, so that's <laughs> so, okay. So that's break great. out the lino. Yeah. Break out the lino and some Beastie Boys records. I'm saying thanks very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. And Jerry knows you want a 68 Firebird for Christmas. I do want a 68. So, well, 67 Firebird 67. for Christmas. That'd be in white. Cheers, guys. Good show. Smile Excellent. away. <laughs> Smile away, boys. Smile away. Thank you very much for joining us. Really, really appreciate it. Like I said, if you want to comment below, if you want to uh, let us know how you if you want to do if you want us to do this again, uh, what you want us to do. The theme about these days, we could just keep picking up bikes and starting them up for you and making it work. No problems whatsoever, dead straightforward. We might keep doing that kind of thing. If you've got any suggestions, let us know. Pretty straightforward stuff. Thanks very much for joining us. If you want to get in touch, please don't forget you can get in touch with us. On all manner of social media, no dramas whatsoever. You Where's that then, Griff? <laughs> Where's that? Where's what? Where's the social media? Come on, let's get a like. YouTube. We've got Facebook. We've got Instagram. We've got. I, mean, I think as uh, we've got emails. We've got phone numbers. We've got a door. Sales, in, we've got a door you can walk through to come and say hello. Come and say hello. Come and say hello. We said no problems if you wanted to. No dramas. But uh, thanks very much for joining us. Like I said, you can get in touch with us by email sales at apworkshops.co.uk. You can go onto our website and have a quick look and through our shop. Remember, all the technical manuals are there if you do need anything. That's www.apworkshops.co.uk. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care of yourselves. Talk to you soon. Thank you all.